My name is Evelyn Wairimbo, uh, pastor uh, Sita Mburuburu. And today uh, we want to reflect on uh, our devotion and this encounter. Three, uh, today's devotion uh, is entitled Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath. And we want to reflect on the word of God from the book of Luke chapter 6 from verse 1 to 11. A couple of thoughts uh, to see what Jesus says concerning the Sabbath. And so you can read together with me Luke chapter 6, 1 to 11. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields and his disciples began to pick some ears of corn, rub them in their hands and eat the grain. Some of the Pharisees asked, why are you doing what's unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry. He entered the house of God and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat. And also he gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and was teaching and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? He looked round at them all. And then said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. But they were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. One of the things that you will dis discover from the portion of scripture that we have just read concerning the Sabbath is that Jesus redefined the Sabbath. He came in as the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was not meant to enslave man so that they worship the Sabbath. But the Sabbath was meant for rest. And it's only in Christ that we get true rest. And this is the message that Jesus, I believe, was passing on to the Pharisees, the spiritual leaders of his day. That now that he has come, true restoration of people's life can only be found, not in a day. True rest. And no wonder he says elsewhere in the book of Matthew 28 and verse 11. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So true rest can only be found in Christ. And therefore the Sabbath, the seventh day that God gave, that was meant to be kept holy and set apart, can only find its fulfillment in Christ, who is the Lord of the Sabbath. And no wonder Jesus says, you do good on the Sabbath day. And he is, was able to restore a life of a man who had a shriveled hand. He brought in restoration. And that was the mission of Christ. He says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. And one of the things that Christ was anointed to do is to set the captives free. And a day cannot be able to set anyone free. We are not called to follow a day but to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So he comes in and brings in a new understanding that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. And true rest can only be found in him and him alone. And no wonder he intentionally did that which the Pharisees thought was wrong to do on the Sabbath day, to point to the fact that he was the fulfillment of the Sabbath. So are you out there? Have you found the Lord Jesus Christ? Has he found you? Can you say like this man that your life has been restored? Because only uh, in Christ would your life be restored. He alone can bring true rest. And therefore the Bible says, as it says in the book of Hebrews, that there remains rest for God's people. And this rest is only in Christ Jesus. And that's why he came. So it's true we need to rest in, on, on a day, but true rest, because our body needs it, but true rest is only in Christ 
Jesus. Not in a day, but in a person. That's our devotion today. Amen.